So I've been growing immersed aquarium plants for quite a long time now and I finally feel like I have a setup that not only can produce hundreds of aquarium plants but is incredibly easy to maintain. And the best part is I've run a number of experiments using this setup behind me and the results from those is showing that it's incredibly productive, meaning that it's growing not only some of the healthiest plants that I've seen but also some of the fastest growth rates from some of the other setups that I've used in the past. So in this video I'm going to walk you through why this setup is quickly becoming my favorite way to grow immersed plants and a little bit how I like to maintain my plants when they're growing in this setup. Alright, so first and foremost, this is an ebb and flow system. Now, I have a number of videos on my channel that goes in more detail on what that actually means and how to build one, but essentially this system circulates water into each one of these levels here and the water level actually rises and falls through the action of a bell siphon that is located in each one of the tubs. And by actually having the water level rise and fall in each one of the tubs, it actually gives a lot of benefits to the plants that we put in here. In fact, in my experience, the benefits that the plants get actually makes them grow way faster than any other method that I've used to grow immersed plants in the past. So there are actually two main benefits to having the water level fluctuate in this system. And the first one is bringing nutrients to the plants. So by having the water level rise and fall, it's constantly bringing fresh fresh nutrients to the plant's roots. And over time, as the plants grow, they're going to strip the nutrients out of the water that is brought to their roots. And by having the system constantly ebbing and flowing, it's constantly flushing that old water that has had its nutrients depleted back down into the system, and new water is brought to the plants that is going to have a higher concentration of nutrients. Now, over time, because this is a circulating system, the nutrients are going to eventually deplete and need to be replenished. But by having the water level constantly flushing through the system, it's going to bring fresh nutrient solution to the plants and is going to continue to promote their growth. And so the second benefit is actually oxygenation for the plants. Now, believe it or not, even though we're growing aquarium plants, they still benefit by having oxygen in their root layers. And in fact, having healthy roots is going to be the number one thing to drive the growth of our plants. So when the water level decreases in these tubs, the water that is in the root layer ends up getting replaced by fresh air, which is going to bring oxygen to the root layer. In fact, in one of our previous experiments, when we were taking a look at the roots that were growing in this setup, we could see that they were incredibly healthy and showed no sign of an anaerobic environment, which is probably the reason why we had such amazing growth of those plants. So essentially when the water level rises we get fresh nutrients to our plants and then when the water level decreases we get fresh oxygen to the plant and that cycle just continues over and over again and is a perfect combination that has been fueling a ton of growth in this system. And so while we're on the topic of the water level circulating through the system I should point out that I don't run my pump 24 7. I find that a little bit excessive because at the end of the day these plants even though they're growing quickly they're not stripping the nutrients out of the water column that fast to warrant the water level constantly fluctuating in the system. So with that said, I only run the pump for two minutes, which is enough time to trigger one full cycle of the ebb and flow. And then I leave the pump off for about 20 minutes. And I find that's a good balance between not running the pump 24 seven, which saves a little bit on electricity, while also replenishing the water in each one of these tubs at a frequency that still allows the plants to grow at their fastest rate. So I'll kick on the pump and show you exactly how this works with one ebb and flow cycle. But first I'm gonna remove the lids off of each one of my tubs. Obviously as we are growing aquarium plants, they need incredibly high humidity. So to achieve that, I keep the lids on all of the tubs and between that and the cycling water, it maintains the humidity near 100%. All right, so as you can see, we've got the pump on now and there's a small trickle of water coming from this pipe. Uh, this pipe I just made out of PVC and it's got a little ball valve uh, that's just restricting some of the flow. Uh, and the reason for that is I just wanted it dialed in to a point where um, not too much water is coming in. That might disturb some of the substrate in the plants. But also I've got it timed so that in about two minutes uh, the pump will shut off and that'll be enough water into the system that's going to trigger the bell siphon and start the ebb and flow cycle. So as this fills up, uh, we've just got some extra Anubias plants that I'm growing here. Uh, these are extras that I had from my most recent experiment, so I've just tossed them in the top bin uh, just so that they can continue to grow. And you can't see it very well here on the video just because of how overgrown things are, but there is actually the bell siphon 
that's tucked away here so I'll lift that up so I've just made this out of an old uh, plastic bottle uh, but it's the perfect height and down in there I've got my standpipe and I've actually also got this net pot that I slightly modified uh, that acts as a little bit of a pre-screen but I haven't had any issues with uh, leaves or anything getting clogged and blocking the bell siphon so so far everything's worked really good and so essentially that's going to sit there until this tub fills up at which point the bell siphon's going to kick on and the water is going to flush into the tub below it uh, but I can show you here a few examples just some of the Anubias plants that we're growing uh, and so as you can see there lots of roots coming out of the plant and this is what I was talking about earlier where right now as you can see the root layer is going to be covered in water uh, but as this actually drains it's going to be replaced with oxygen and that's going to help promote tons of growth on our Anubias. Once the water level starts to drain I've just got vinyl tubing over here uh, that's all the water is going to drain into the second tub here and then again on this side I've got tucked away under all this crypt I do have another similar bell siphon to what I showed you and that's going to trigger once the water level gets high enough and that's going to fall down in that tube and that's basically going to continue all the way down uh, the system so that will actually continue until it empties into the bottom sump here that's sitting on the floor and so in this sump uh, you'll see I do have a heater just to keep the water temperature warm which helps with the humidity in each one of the tubs and also promotes growth uh, by having a nice warm environment for our tropical plants. Uh, there is a submersible pump here. This is probably a little overkill for what I actually need so in the future I might sub that out for a, a smaller pump uh, but right now it's doing the job pretty good. And then I've also just got a pothos plant uh, sitting in that absolutely loves all the nutrients in that water and has been growing like crazy so the plan is uh, over time to just keep propagating that and eventually have a jungle look with a my immerse setup I think that would look really cool but for now that's just sitting in there uh, getting a free buffet of nutrients all right so speaking of nutrients it is about time that I need to replace the nutrient solution in my system so I'll take you along and show you exactly how I do that Typically I wait about two weeks before replacing the nutrients and I find that's a pretty good sweet spot for the amount of plants that I have growing and how fast they're consuming the nutrients uh, before I start to see deficiencies in my plants. So for the nutrients that I'm using in my setup right now I'm using a hydroponic nutrient solution and the specific one is by General Hydroponic and this is actually a three-part system so it consists of your flora grow, your flora bloom, and your flora micro and so the reason why this is a three-part system is so that you have a little bit more control over the specific nutrients that you're adding into your setup so for example if you wanted your plants to grow more vegetatively you can use more of the flora grow nutrient solution which is going to be heavier in nitrogen on the other hand if you wanted your plants to move into a blooming stage for example if you're growing tomatoes and you wanted a larger harvest uh, you could then add more of the flora bloom which is going to trigger your plants to grow in that way. As for me, because I'm growing aquarium plants, I've just used equal parts of all three fertilizers and I've got amazing growth. However, I am very curious if using a little bit more of the flora bloom can cause certain plants such as Anubias to trigger more flowers. And in which case we might be able to cause our plants to flower and cross pollinate them to produce some Anubias seeds. So that would be a very interesting experiment that I think I will run in the future. So if you're curious about that, uh, you can hit that subscribe button and be notified when that video comes out. All right, and so the last product that I use is pH down. And the reason why I use this is because where I live, I have very hard water that has a high pH. And what pH down is, is it's basically phosphoric acid that you add to the water and it lowers the pH down. Typically plants that are growing hydroponically need a slightly acidic environment. And so adding pH down to my water has been a really great thing for fueling the growth of my plants. Some tools that I use to help change water is a pH pen and a TDS meter. Uh, I'll be honest, I don't use the TDS meter too often and the pH pen is just used when I'm adding pH down to make sure that I have the optimal uh, pH for my plants. But after doing this for a little while, I've kind of dialed it into a point where I know how much pH down I need to add for my specific water. Uh, so the pH pen has become less and less used the really nice thing about having the system is that when the main pump is off, 
all of the water drains into the bottom sump. So it makes it really convenient to just pump that away and replace it with fresh water when it comes time to replace your nutrient solution. And typically I'm only keeping around 15 gallons in the bottom sump at any given time. Uh, so it really doesn't take that long to just quickly pump out that water and then replace it with fresh water. All right, so next up, now that everything is drained, we're gonna use our Python to pump some water into the bottom reservoir. Now I've pre-measured this out that the bottom of the 90 degree elbow in the drain pipe is around 15 gallons. So I use that as my reference point when filling up the tub. So now that we've filled up the tub, the next step is to add the pH down in order to lower the pH. So what I find works great for me is with about 15 gallons in the bottom sump, combined with the water that I have here, uh, I add 15 milliliters of the pH down, and that usually brings me to where I need to be in terms of pH. Also, this stuff is pretty strong and it can burn your skin, so I use gloves whenever I'm handling the pH down. So I've got 15 milliliters here into the tub and then I rinse out my little measuring cup. Got a little stir stick in order to disperse the pH down within the reservoir. All right, so next up, we can add the nutrient solution into the tub. So following the instructions here, it recommends to add Flora Micro into the solution first before the others. So we'll go ahead and do that. I've given this a good shake, and what I've found has worked well for me in the past is around 60 milliliters of each of the three different nutrient solutions. So this is a 30 milliliter cup, so I'll do two full cups of this. Again, I rinse out my little cup and I've got my stir stick in order to disperse all of the nutrient solution in the tub. So I'll go quickly give this a rinse and then we'll proceed with the other two nutrient solutions in the tub. And just out of curiosity, I've got my pH and TDS pen. So let's take a look and see what the readings are. So pH is around 5.3 and TDS is around 1,500 parts per million. So there we go, we've replenished the nutrient solution and this will last us around two to three weeks depending on how many plants we have growing in the system. And I'd say for the amount of time and effort it took to replace the nutrient solution in this setup while being able to grow almost 500 plants when the system is at its max capacity, I'd say that's an incredibly efficient way to grow hundreds of plants at a minimal effort. Now, if you're curious to learn more about the kind of growth that we can have in this setup with our plants, I ran this really amazing experiment where I was growing Anubias and Crips under a variety of different lighting and substrate conditions, and the results from that experiment are really interesting. So click through to this video here if you wanna learn more about that one. Until next time, thanks for watching.